Hello and welcome to Jewelry Rescue. If you're new here, I'm Kat and I'm a girl on a mission to rescue and recycle the world's unwanted jewellery. Today we're going to be going through a massive car boot sale jewellery haul. I'm so excited to show you this. I've got so much lovely vintage stuff in here to show you. I went to the car boot sale a week ago and I bought all of these bags. I actually bought the a complete box of jewellery from one stall, a mystery bag from another and a big haul from another and then a few other bits. I went back yesterday today and it was slimmer pickings it had been raining and although it's an indoor car boot sale I think that puts people off it was mother's day but anyway I've got a few bits there to show you as well so let's get straight into it the bits that I picked up yesterday I bought a job lot of things for two pounds there's a stall that I think must do similar to me in terms of unboxing unwanted jewellery and there's always bits and bobs single earrings and so on so two pounds for these I got this cool probably 1960s plastic ring, I just thought that was really unusual. This beautiful artisan hammered silver earring, which I think when I next do a workshop, I might just cut the back off and then put a bale on the top so it can be worn as a pendant. Then there's this beautiful brass earring with mother of pearl. It's a really lovely piece of mother of pearl in there. There's quite a lot of verdigris on the brass, but if you watched last week's video, you will know how to clean that. So do check that out on the channel in my tutorials. If you haven't seen it, I'll pop a link in the description for you as well to watch after. I got this ring, which is obviously missing its cabochon, but I don't know if you remember a few weeks ago, I bought this one actually from the same stall and it came off the band the first time I wore it. Well, it happened again and fell on the floor and the stone actually fell out. It's just a costume, cheapy one, but it's a really nice little piece of agate. And I wondered if I glue that into there, it might just have a bit more integrity to, than the one that's already fallen off the band twice. I've got this really cool fossilised coral bead. So that will be made into a focal for a necklace. And then this is interesting. This is a broken necklace. It's missing its chain on one side there. I could fix that up, but I quite fancy making some earrings out of these little glass pieces. I think I could make some really cute things with that. So keep an eye on my shorts and I'll be turning that into something else. And then for myself, I bought this little bracelet, which looks like gold. It's quite convincing, but it's not gold. It's a costume piece. It's quite light, but it has the look and I just fancy treating myself as it was Mother's Day. Now, when I went the week before, I took my two children with me and I gave them 50p each to choose me something for Mother's Day. And they actually chose these from the same stall I got those bits from. My little one, who's four, chose this lovely pin. I think it might be a Cancer Research charity one. I couldn't find it online, any details, but it's the colours that they use in their branding. So I put that on my denim jacket. And then my big girl chose me this lovely lapis lazuli bracelet. It's a little bit too big for me, so I am going to put that onto a new wire with an easier clasp. That's a bit tricky to do up one of those barrel clasps on a bracelet but lovely gemstones. So I thought they did really well. Okay, let's look at the big haul now. So I picked up this bag, a mixed lot, because I saw something in there that I particularly liked the look of. There was a guy who had a whole box of vintage jewelry, lots of beads and things. And I paid him 20 pounds for this whole bag. So we're gonna unbox that one. From the same stall I got the bits that I just showed you, I picked up loads of vintage pieces. So I will show you those. And then I also got a few random bits off other stalls as well. So let's dive in. So looking at the individually picked pieces first, I actually picked up this costume ring for myself for a pound. It's not silver, but it's just really cool. I thought it was fun. And actually I've worn it every day since I bought it and it's doing pretty well actually it hasn't immediately lost all its plating so that's quite fun i've got some cloisonne butterfly earrings for 50p those are always popular and they're not branded whoops but really pretty vintage ones and then look at this i think this is maybe alpaca or a low grade silver with lapis lazuli and I pay £3 for this. 
and I just thought it was so cool. It's got a little wire clasp there. It's got one of its little bits missing there, but other than that, it's in pretty good vintage condition. What do we think? Maybe 1970s, perhaps? I just thought that was really cool. Definitely worth £3. And then look at these abalone earrings. These were a pound. Aren't they stunning? Oh, I've just realised it's not a pair of earrings. This one's an earring. And this one has got a pendant bail on it. What does it say on there? 18 karat gold plated, which is not really anything to be excited about. It's probably a very thin layer. So I will turn those into earrings, or maybe I should turn them both into pendants. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Love those. Let's go into this bag. This bag was from the people who I bought the other bits I just showed you in the tray from yesterday. So Now, I did go a little bit mad, <laughs> but I only spent £11 and I got quite a lot of bits here. So firstly, this amazing charm bracelet, which I think I saw somebody else post something really similar in a YouTube short. So shout at me if it was you or if you saw it. It's glass and a, I think that's a faux pearl. And some of these have coins on the back of them. How cool is that? I just thought that was so awesome. I don't know how old it is. I would love to know. If you know, let me know. I'm assuming it's mid-century rather than older. It's not a precious metal, but it is so cool. This lovely little piece, which is possibly a mourning brooch. It's come off its back there. And I didn't actually realise this is the car boot cell that's in a car park. And there's not really, there's lighting in part of it, but it's strip lighting and it's, it's very dark in there. I didn't actually realise it was missing a few of its pearls, but it's still very pretty. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that, but I had to rescue it. And this one, which will go onto a chain, it's not gold or anything. It's a fun little cameo. Oh, and there was a back, there was a brooch back in the mix. So he threw that one in for me to fix, to maybe possibly put on the back of this one. I don't think it's nice enough, to be honest. But we'll see. This beautiful artisan glass bracelet. These are faux pearls. I may take those faux pearls off or I might take them all off and make something else. But I just, I really love lampwork glass and these are really fun. Then this one, which has religious symbols on it, it has a really sweet Millefiori glass heart there. And I loved these ones. So I think that I will probably turn these into wrapped rings. Aren't they lovely? They'll be cute for the spring summer. This necklace, this might be familiar to you. I come across these beads quite a lot. I don't know if they've got a name. Let me know in the comments if you do know that. They've actually got one of these in my local Oxfam shop for £20. It's been there for months, as, um, <laughs> as to be expected, really. But I thought they were fun. So I don't know if that will sell as it is. But if not, I will upcycle it into... Maybe some bracelets and some earrings. Really pretty. Look at these glass ones. These were quite unusual because they've been cut to look like gemstone chips. I just thought that was quite unusual. I hadn't seen that before. Are we in focus? Let's have a look. You probably realise by now I love working with glass beads for my upcycled jewellery. This beautiful alpaca and abalone inlaid pendant. That needs a really good clean. Again, if you haven't seen it, I'll show you how to clean alpaca in last week's cleaning guide. And that will go onto a chain. I'll take it off this rotten old cord. This one I just thought was really pretty and gold and pearls are going to be really big for the next season, apparently, according to one of my fashion magazines. And I thought somebody would really like that. That's cool. And then look at this one. 
this just needs a little repair it needs a new clasp on it i don't know if that's a recognizable hang tag there's no brand on it i guess it's probably 80s i mean it could be older could be mid-century maybe i don't know Shout at me if you know, but I just thought it was really cool. So that can either be repaired or I can make these into individual pendants or even earrings. They would be really fun. So that bundle was £11. Then I picked up this bag from another guy who I think probably does house clearances. He just has random things. And I got some cool bits from him last time I was there. I paid £3 for this bag and I'll show you why because I spotted one thing I really wanted. Actually, two things that I wanted. So this was one of them and he knew that this had a 925 stamp on it and pointed it out on here. It looks like it's got a maker. There's only one, but it's the sort of earring that I think a man or a woman could wear and you could definitely wear it as a mismatched earring. It's really cool. And then the other thing that I spotted that I really wanted was this lovely brass rocking horse. Isn't he lovely? I don't think he's anything special really, but he just really appealed to me. I think I'll probably put him onto a brighter chain and give him a nice clean up. He's lovely. What else have we got then? I didn't really look at anything else in the bag. We've got some S's. They'll go into a cufflink lot. We've got some faux pearls. They're always handy for spaces and things. That's plastic to look like stone. It's got quite a nice clasp on it. Not silver. Ah, oh, we've got Tinkerbell. That's funny. I've actually only got one key ring to list, I think, and it is also Tinkerbell, so I'll probably put those as a pair. That's really weighty. It's a nice one. Proper copyright Disney. This abalone bracelet which if you've been watching my videos for a while you might have seen that I bought some of these on holiday actually in a shell shop down in Cornwall so I might clean that up and add that to my collection and if you are new here and you haven't checked out the channel please do hit the subscribe button and the bell because I do thrift hauls and unboxings and upcycling and tutorials and all sorts of fun stuff so this is a costume bar brooch but really cute Get that one got a little cat i might turn that into a charm some more charms i'll probably just put those onto phone charm carriers a costume chain that's got a look at claire's accessories really pretty lampwork glass heart you might like that for the summer. Oh, look, we've got a shark's tooth. And I'm pretty sure it's a real one. So I might make that one into a pendant. It's huge. That's cool. Let me untangle this knot and I'll show you what's there. Okay, this is all necklaces and all of a cheapy costume variety. They've all got the look of Claire's about them. This one's fun, missing a little stone, unfortunately. This is pretty though. Holiday piece, Pineapple Island. That could easily be a Claire's one as well, actually. Might not be a tourist one. This is an interesting, charmy one. I'll probably take these bits off and make some earrings out of them. And then this one is a multi-layered chain and it's got a couple of charms clipped on, so I'll make phone charms out of those. I think that was worth three pounds. There was um, a few bits in there that I like and I'll recycle what I can from the other bits. And then, now this is the big one, guys. This 
the guy had loads of vintage stuff. He had medals, pins, all sorts. I looked at his stall again yesterday, but I thought I need to work through this stuff first. I bought the whole box of beads that he had and I haven't looked all the way through it because there was just so much there and I was a little bit overwhelmed. I asked him how much for the box and he said 20. I did try to haggle him down, but he wasn't having any of it. So hopefully it was 20 pounds well spent. Let's have a look. So straight off, I can see some lovely grey freshwater pearls. It's a barrel clasp. They haven't been individually hand knotted. So I think I will probably reuse those, repurpose them into earrings and bracelets. That's good. That's probably my money back just out of the pearls, actually. Wow. I'm assuming this is 80s, although it has got quite a modern looking clasp on it. Can't see any branding on it. It's really heavy. It's glass. And then it's got these yellow beaded bits at the bottom. That's so fun. Makes me think of Mardi Gras. It's been knotted in between the glass. That's obviously a really nice brand. I'd love to know who that is by, so please shout at me if you know. Now, these ones, I wondered if they could be Bakelite. These don't feel like a regular plastic and they are not amber. But I don't know very much about Bakelite, so I thought that I would make this my challenge. I'm going to have to learn about Bakelite and perhaps we'll do another video about that and see what we've got. So there was that one, and then there was also this one. This feels more like plastic beads that I know. They're a completely different texture to those matte ones. But somebody will snap that up because they've got the look of amber. They're not they're definitely not amber, they're a plastic. That's really cool. 60s one maybe. These beautiful garnets, this is a set of a bracelet and a necklace, really lovely garnet chips. I'm not sure whether I will repurpose those or sell them as is. What do you think? Let me know what to do with those. I could make tons of bracelets and earrings out of those chips. Here is another one with very similar beads to those first ones. Certainly got a lot of age to it, I think. It just doesn't feel like modern. It's definitely you know vintage plastic if it's not Bakelite. Exciting. We shall have a look into those. Then there's these ones. They they look like wood. I think those ones are wood. And then we've got some prayer beads. I think they're some kind of nut. They're irregular shaped. Interesting. Ah, now these ones are lovely gemstones. What do we think that is? Could it be jade? Or aventurine maybe? They've got a little bit of sparkle to them. They're lovely and cold. That's definitely got some age to it. Oh, and it's got some lapis lazuli in between. That is really cool. Definitely think I have my money's worth here. These are plastic. Oh, and we've got some sterling. Yeah, those are 95 marks on there. That needs a very good clean. That will come up beautifully. What is this? Dior. Well, this... Hmm. I've never handled a pre-loved piece of Dior, but it's looking good. Does Dior have a good second-hand value? I've never looked into it. It's got a really cool thing. This looks like my teeny tiny earrings. It's very heavy. Perhaps it might be stainless steel. We've got Dior on the back there. 
And this feels like it could be a genuine one. I like the fact that it's got the Dior small there. I need to do some comparing online. That could be quite a good little find. I didn't see that in the box when I was haggling for it. I don't suppose he did either. This was something that I saw that I loved in the box. A reverse carved portrait in glass. It's not gold, but it's gorgeous. So that will go onto a new chain. Yes, definitely got my money back and more on this bag. He threw these in at the last minute when I tried to haggle with him. Some nice purple dyed agate beads. Those I'll probably make rings from. Centurion hematite cufflink. I think that's a bit of agate. That's the other one of those. This looks like accessories. Oh yeah, it is. So Zed is accessorizes gold plated range. That's really cute. Modern piece thrown in with all these vintage ones. Wonder if he got that from somewhere else. That's really sweet. I like that. This feels like steel. What's it say on there? P and B. P and B. Can't think who that might be. Let me know if you know. I think that's a steel piece. I was in stainless steel. That's cool. I've got a pocket watch chain. I don't think that's silver. It's probably, it could be a low grade silver, but it doesn't look like sterling. Let's see how the cuff link. Pretty lamp work drop studs. Those are really unusual and cute. They might be on sterling hooks. I'll look at those a bit more closely. Oh, well, these are interesting beads. So these ones that look like nuts are actually ceramic. They're really heavy. And then we've got some glass. And then these spatter glass beads or end of day glass. That's lovely. Another nice vintage one. NHK. No idea. Tell me if you know what that stands for. And we've got some more of these same possibly Bakelite beads. is bone that's quite pretty and this one I think it might be bone as well cool is that that's really unusual rifle no maker on that and then we've got some shell. Now he was trying to, to justify his £20 price. Oh, that's cute, look. Like a rose. Um, by saying that these were real pearls, which they're clearly not pearls. But I think that they're probably coral. And those are just on a string. They're not actually a necklace. They were obviously for sale to be making other things and those are really pretty so I will certainly make all sorts out of those could make rings bracelets earrings so what do you think of my haul so that was 20 pounds the other bag that I bought was a, the one before was three the one before that was 11 and the other bits that I got yesterday so we're looking at about 
40, 45 pounds, somewhere like that. And I think that I did really well. What was your favourite piece? Please do let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button. Check out the channel if you haven't already and subscribe as well. And I'll see you next time for another unboxing. Take care, guys. Bye.